America's public schools just opened this school year amidst the biggest teacher shortage in history. The result has been stiff competition nationwide to attract teachers. Special education correspondent John Merrow begins a new series on a way New York City has decided to address the problem. Everything's overwhelming. I've, I feel like I have a lot of standards to live up to. I'm not nervous right now, but I'm sure tomorrow morning I'm going to be nervous. I mean, you can't describe it. It's like, what am I doing? But we'll see. Well, it's, uh, it's exciting. There's a little nervousness also. I would say it's a combination of both. Tomorrow's the big day. Of course, Dana, Scott, Renee, and Jack were nervous on the day before school started, their first year teachers. But they have two more good reasons for being on edge. They've been assigned to teach in one of the worst public schools in New York City, and they've had only one month of training. Four years ago, the chancellor of the New York City school system identified the 52 worst schools and grouped them into one district. His idea was to staff them with the city's best teachers by offering salary bonuses. That strategy did not work. Not enough veteran teachers were willing to sign up. Plan B called for recruiting bright professionals looking for a career change, a challenge. 2,300 people applied, and 348 were chosen to be teaching fellows. I won't go through the numbers of people, but we have a judge, many journalists, many lawyers, a physician, an ophthalmologist, an acupuncturist, um, career changers, career starters, career restarters, um, you name it, we've got it, and what a wonderful, wonderful group. These new teachers will be paid the regular starting salary, $31,500. While they're teaching, they'll be working on their master's degrees. The school system is paying the tuition. The teaching fellows began their training on August 1st at three area universities, including Brooklyn College. My name is Jack Nastasi, and I'm 22 years old. I was planning on going to Wall Street, maybe working for a firm, getting into stocks and bonds or something, and a couple of months ago I went to a graduation for one of my friends, and I, I just said, you know, how great it would feel to stand in front and having all these kids speak about how their experiences with their teachers, and I would love to be that teacher that someone talks about and says, you know, this guy made a difference in my life. Uh, I think that would be like the greatest reward possible. My name is Renee Kaysen and I'm 22 years old. I was interested in teaching a little bit back and forth. I was like, education's my thing, you know, I really want to work with the kids. I have a lot to learn. There have been, there's a lot of experienced teachers who know a lot more than me and I just have to be willing to embrace whatever criticism they have of me and not take it internally, but use it. My name is Scott Smith and I'm 46 years old. I'm an associate broker. Um, I am also a lawyer, and fresh out of law school, I did um, closings for a mortgage bank. I want the students to get something out of being there. I hope that they grow and learn, um, and I hope it's a growth experience for me too, and that I think that I will also learn from the students. My name is Dana Goldberg, and I am 23 years old. Everybody in my family is a teacher. Everybody, all of the women in my family are teachers. And I was dead set against being a teacher. But then my friend told me about this program. Um, he signed up for it and asked me to edit his cover letter. I did that. He said, why don't you do it? You're perfect for teaching. The jobs I do like are always involving kids. So I was like, hey, why not? I'll try it. So um, I stopped being stubborn. And I realized that teaching is for me, and here I am. Before they could be assigned to classrooms, they had to pass two state exams. Over 90% of the fellows passed, including Jack, Renee, Scott, and Dana. They were assigned to PSIS 25 in the Bedford-Stuyvesant section of Brooklyn. It's a K-8 through school with 750 students and some of the lowest test scores in New York City. On September 6, the four were getting their rooms ready for the first day of classes. This is very exciting to me, putting up paper and putting up borders, and I can't wait to do my bulletin board. I have everything, I imagine where everything's going to be, but right now it's just a mess. People think we're going to make a huge difference, and I hope we do. I really hope we do, but 
it's something that was up to. I've heard from several teachers they advise not smiling. Their concern is that you come across as an authority figure and that if, you, if you're too friendly and the students get the impression that you're, you're, you're their friend, then you'll be undermining your own authority. And I don't want that to happen. I guess so, yeah. Well, you know, no, no, go over it. Do it all the way to the end and I'll double it up. So I'll go like this. Have you uh, thought about what you're going to say first? Uh, good morning, students. My name is Jack Nastasi. You guys have to call me Mr. Nastasi, but uh, I'm 22 years old. I just graduated college. I just decided I wanted to teach, and you got no reason to like dislike me. I have no reason to dislike you, so let's start off on a good point. I'm just going to be me. I mean, I can listen to like 10 million teachers telling me, don't smile, don't do this. I'm just going to be me. I'm just going to be who I am, you know? It's like trial and error. My expectation was to try to be the best at it. Just because I like children and have a good rapport with them doesn't mean that I'm going to be a great teacher. September 7th, 2000, the first day of school in New York City. With barely one month of training under their belts, the four rookies went to meet their new students. I don't see two people. You should be next to someone. If not, wait, how many people we have on top? This is your new home for the year. Go inside and select the desk. It's not going to be your final desk, but just sit down and hold tight. Good morning, everybody. Come on, you can say it a little louder than that. When I say good morning to you guys, just say good morning back to me, all right? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Don't be afraid to turn to the person next to you who's sitting right next to you, or the person sitting across from you next to you. Ask them what's going on, because you guys can learn from each other. I'm going to learn from you. You're not just learning from me. I'm going to learn After a smooth start, guys. Jack's day got progressively more difficult. Octavia, and what's, uh, what's, I'm sorry, you got to say a lot. I can't hear. Octavia, is that how you say it? OK, now that begins with an A? An O? So think of a word with an O that, that describes you. All right, you know what? This is, this is flopping. I'm gonna do, we're gonna change this up. I, I tried to do it with the adjectives and I assumed that they knew adjectives better than that, but they really have a poor understanding of adjectives. So they were struggling to think of words that were adjectives. So before I waited 45 minutes for me to figure out that it wasn't working, I ended it. Stop, 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 stop. Stop, stop, I don't wanna hear it. Sit down, sit down, your ass. Everybody be quiet, hands up. Hands up! I don't like yelling at little kids. I mean, uh, some, maybe some people, some people enjoy that. I don't, but it's got to be done, so. Welcome to second grade. Who's excited about second grade? I'm excited about second grade. If you want a, a shortcut name, if your name is Michael and you'd like to be called Mike, then just tell me, OK? okay like Jack, Kelvin. Dana used the name game, the but with better results. Is this what a circle looks like? So I'm going to go first, and my name is Miss Goldberg, and my favorite animal is a dog. Does anybody have a dog? What kind of dog? It's a black one. A black dog? What's the black dog's name? Sheba. Sheba? I have a dog. His name's Rowdy. He has one ear up and one ear down. He's funny looking. They first came in, I was kind of like frazzled. I was like, OK, what do I got to do? And I kind of wrote myself a script, and I had to look at it, and I'm like, OK. That's what I have to do next. And that was about the only time I kind of felt, when we first got in the room, I'm like, oh my god, here's my class. What do I do now? But um, I think after that, everything went smoothly. But it's only 10 o'clock, so <laughs> um, I'll let you know later. So you would like to go into criminal law. You know, just like in, in medicine, there are certain sp specialization areas. It's the same thing in law. There are certain Unlike the other new teachers, Scott is team teaching. He managed to get his seventh grade social studies students engaged in discussion. Yes, Monte. I would like to be an architect when I grow up. Terrific. OK, what, what, do you, what do you like about that? I chose that because when you could like design your own houses, like how you want an area to be. You, you want to do something different? Oh, yeah, different from unusual houses. Right. Yeah, something like that. Right. 
Um, terrific, that's a great idea. There were some, really some good things that happened. I mean, a lot of the students brought notebooks. They brought loose leaf binders. They were prepared. They had pens or pencils. Um, they had supplies. They were organized. Um, and I mean, I thought that part of it was great. Yes? It's uh, Ebony? Yes? Translator, wow. I'm feeling okay. I'm still a little nervous. We're waiting for textbooks. We have some older textbooks that we can use for now that we found. Um, but my co-teacher and I need to sit down and do more preparation. Excuse me, you are not online. Can you please get in line? Thank you. Most of Renee's fourth graders are boys. Yeah, a few of them proved right to be now. difficult to control. Two lines. You seem to be lost, like you don't, you're not with us here. Two lines. This way. You should be facing that way. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Ms. Kaysen. Most of her morning was taken up with instructing the students on how to write their names and addresses, as well as frequent disciplining. It, you see like this? I want you to put your name across. Oh. And this should, I should not hear anything while I'm working with someone else. It's just like I have to go over these rules, and it was really surprising to see that they didn't know how to spell their own address. Put your finished card to the left of your desk. So it should go to the left. Renee's class became more and more restless as the day went on. There is no talking right now. Face your There is no talking right now. There is no talking right now. At the end of their first day, the teaching fellows compared experiences. I have like this one little boy. That's why I know his name so well, because he just tries my nerve. And then this other teacher was saying that he just, he just will try you and he just won't listen. I don't know. I, th I thought I lost him for a minute, so lunchtime. It was just like a bad point. At that point, I was like, I had it up to here, and they, I, I was sick of yelling at him, and I didn't want to yell at him anymore. There was one student who kept leaning back in his chair, and I kept asking him not to do it, and he continued doing it anyway. But then later in the day, I kind of took him aside and spoke with him individually. And um, I think that it had an effect. And, and I think actually that private conversation turned into one of the best moments of the day. Best thing I did today was probably um, journal writing about themselves. Um, they love talking about themselves. Um, I told them, I asked them all these questions like, what's your favorite music? What's your favorite food? I just think like when I was giving out the points, they were really happy. And then when I was picking up for lunch, like the girls all happy to see me. And it's cool. I'm just mentally and physically drained from the last two months between the fellowship and all that, you know, rigorous training and 12 hour days to this. It's like, once Thanksgiving. <laughs> The next morning, all four arrived early, ready for the challenges ahead. Correspondent John Merrow will return periodically to New York Public School No. 25 during this school year, and he will update us on the progress of these four new teachers.